Hi, welcome to Physics Teacher. In this video, I'm going through a lab that I do with my grade 12 physics class, and it's going to be on Hooke's Law. What we're going to be doing is measuring the spring constant of that spring, and at the end of the video, we got a bonus challenge for you. All right, so if you need to download a copy of the lab handout that I use in my class, it's available for free in the description. So go check that out first if you want that. Now what we're going to be doing is we are going to be measuring how far this spring extends from its equilibrium position as I attach different masses to it and therefore as I exert different forces on it due to the weight of the mass. And then we're gonna collect the data for different weights, and then we can plot a graph of force versus um, position from equilibrium, and the slope of that graph is going to be the spring or force constant of our spring. So let's get started. All right, so our first mass is going to be 250 grams or 0.25 kilograms. You can see I've made the bottom of the spring right at zero on our meter stick. So let's look where the bottom of the spring goes to when we attach this weight. All right, so if you like, you can pause the video there and make your measurement. Next, we're going to attach 500 grams or 0.5 kilograms. And you can pause the video there and make your measurement. Now I'm going to add one of these 250 grams, so that'll be 0.75 kilograms. Okay, and you can pause the video there and make your measurement. Finally, we're going to add a one kilogram mass. And you can pause your video there and make your measurement. All right, so I hope you plot your graph of those four points of force on your y-axis, which you calculate due to force of gravity, mass in kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And then on your x-axis, your position from equilibrium. So your measurement here, but convert that to meters as well. And the slope of that linear line of best fit will be the spring constant. And you're gonna need your spring constant for the next challenge. The next challenge will be if I take this one kilogram mass and instead of slowly guiding it to its equilibrium position, if I just release it from rest here, at what height from the floor should I move this ring stand so that this mass gets as close to the floor as possible without touching it. We call this the bungee jump challenge, right? You want to give this mass a thrill, but you don't want to have it smack into the ground, okay? You're going to need the spring constant, and you're going to need conservation of energy. So give it a try, and then I'm gonna show you these calculations, and we're going to do a bungee jump. All right, so for our bungee jump problem, what we originally have is our spring in its equilibrium position with a mass just placed on it about to fall. And then what happens is it falls and reaches some maximum extension down here with the mass on it. Now, at that maximum extension, that's where it's going to go no lower. So let's call that height as zero. Now over here, where the spring has not been neither extended or compressed, this is where we're going to have x as zero. That is the equilibrium position for the spring. Now what we want to find is how much that spring is going to be extended, so the value of x. To figure out how high above the ground we should place the spring so that our mass doesn't quite hit the ground. So we're going to use energy conservation to solve this problem. 
So let's call this our before situation and this our after situation. Now due to energy conservation, the total energy before is going to equal the total energy after. Now over here, our mass is not moving, our spring is not extended, so we neither have kinetic nor elastic potential energy. However, we do have it lifted up above the ground. So its position in a gravitational field gives it gravitational potential energy. Now at the lowest point, we set height to be zero. So there's no gravitational potential energy after. It's also, since that's max extension, its velocity is going to be zero because that's just before it changes its direction and bounces back up. So there's no kinetic energy either. However, because the spring has been extended, we have elastic potential energy. So let's write our equations for those. So for gravitational energy, that is mgh. And for elastic potential energy, that is 1 half kx squared. Now one thing that you might notice is that the height right here is going to have the same value as x. Because this value above the ground where it starts is the same distance that the spring gets extended down to. So we can rewrite h as just x. So now 1x is going to cancel, and that makes it easier to solve for x. So if we rearrange now for x, so let's multiply both sides by 2. We get 2mg is equal to kx. Divide both sides by k, and we'll get x equals to 2mg over k. Now our mass in, in this example is a 1 kilogram mass. Gravity is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. K is going to be the spring constant you calculated in this lab. So knowing that, calculate what x is and tell me how high we should place the mass before we drop it. All right, so we've done the calculations. Now let's test our bungee jump. And three, two, one. That was pretty close. Let's see that again close up. All right, and three, two, one. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that lap on Hooke's Law. If you did, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next one.